Brisbane Raw, first year last year under Gareth McPherson. Interesting campaign, finished fairly strong, but I think probably underwhelming for where they'd like to finish. Big youth push last year. Obviously, Gareth coming over from the QAS, that's his link to the side, and he brought through some young players. This year, slightly more mature recruitment and slightly more experienced. How do we think they're going to approach this year, and where do we see them finishing? If I'm honest, it's much of a muchness looking at the club um, and the players, regardless of what they've brought in. With what they have, I don't see them progressing too much. Um, as Catherine and I were saying before, they're very fortunate to have Minnie available there. Um, she gives them that little bit of extra, but I don't see them progressing too much past what they achieved last year. And that's probably pretty blunt and harsh, but someone has to say it. Yeah, look, I think um, for, for many, many years, uh, Brisbane Raw have been blessed to have so many Matildas and such a great structure in, in their uh, team, you know, they had a great base of players, and you know, year in year out, they're always so successful. And obviously, um, you know, once the women's game started to grow, and the Matildas obviously got a lot more success, a lot of these players had started to go overseas. So we're seeing now in the A League Women's for the Brisbane Raw team is really a rebuild on what they're trying to, um, you know, find themselves in the league. And I think it's a it's a big job for Gareth, and um, it's going to take time. It's not something that's going to be an easy fix. And I think you know he's got a lot of young kids coming through the QAS at the moment. That's where a lot of their main their main team is from. But, you know, they're very lucky in having a leader, um, as in Katrina Gorey, that will be back in the squad. But I think it's going to be a, another tough t- season for them again. Yeah, it certainly will. They conceded 30 goals last year, the second worst in the competition, despite finishing seven points off finals. Shoring up that defence, quite a hard job. They've recruited... Um, Hensley Handcuff from Gotham FC, um, Brody Sams, their former goalkeeping coach, I'm sure, helping with that recruitment. How do they solve this defensive issue, Riley Dobson and Kath Canooley? It's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> How can you solve defence? Um, look, it's, if for me, looking across the A-League women as a whole, not just Brisbane Raw, Raw defence is a huge problem at the moment, and it's not just in the A-League women, it's nationally as well. We seem to struggle to create defenders, Um they they need to defend as a team. The biggest thing that I'm finding, if you don't have those, you know, three or four defenders that can hold a team together, you need to get everyone behind the ball and defend from the front. I think the biggest thing in defending is your discipline, right? And that's that's the most important thing and, and working as a team and having that structure. And it's something that, you know, in, in your sessions, it's something that you have to consistently work on and make sure that there is, you know, leaders in there and, and hopefully... Um, Hensley can bring a little bit more of that leadership to the A-League women. I always find when we do get our internationals, it's something that they do bring to our competition is the the professionalism of what they are used to in, in other countries as well, which is always great, and especially for a lot of those younger girls coming through, um, something that they can actually learn from. But um, as Riley was saying, I think overall it's something that, you know, we can definitely improve on as, as a league and as a country in terms of our you know, defensive positioning and, and what these teams are actually doing. It, it can be fixed. It takes a lot of work, but it's something that, you know, he's been there already in the job. He can, you know, make changes that he can fix those problems. Yeah, you mentioned leadership there. Obviously, many, Ishnari, the captain, and these foreigners coming in. Is that enough for these young girls to be led by these players? Is there enough leadership there? Is there enough experience there? It comes down to respect from younger players. You need to respect those that have the experience and acknowledge that and not think you're above that, which is something that whether Brisbane have that in place, I don't know because I'm not involved there. However, they do have the experience. They have the discipline in the older players, but it's going to come down to whether they can project that and have their younger cohorts listen. I think it's going to be really important to see, you know, what Gareth has done with these younger players in the off-season. I think, um, you know, what we are doing with these players in the off-season, how we're actually um, keeping in touch with them and obviously them being out of the QAS is something that you can actually work with them on an all-year-round basis. So hopefully there's been some work put into these younger players coming through and understand, you know, the core values and the principles of what the team wants to um, expect. So hopefully... Um, you know, and again, a lot of these girls, their first year last year, so coming into their second season in the A-League women, um, they're going to have a little bit more experience under their belt, which hopefully will help them through this next season.